Mr. Chairman, we have Mr. Carter here ready to go. Okay. Mr. Chairman, now we recognize Mr. Carter for five minutes. Mr. Carter, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank both of you for being here. It's, uh, I know that this hearing is supposed to be for pipeline reliability, but it's not often that we get the chairman of the of FERC as well as the number two man at the Department of Energy in front of us. So instead of discussing the creation of a new level of bureaucracy for pipelines, we should be fighting the current energy crisis. Gentlemen, I want to read from the Department of Energy's website. The mission of the Energy Department is to ensure America's security and prosperity by addressing its energy, environmental, and nuclear challenges through transforma transformative science and technology solutions. A year ago, the United States of America was energy independent. There are some of those who would say that we were energy dominant. We were actually exporting energy. And I would say that um, the Department of Energy was actually adhering to its mission pretty well in, at that time. You know, I'm old enough to remember the late 70s when we realized that we were too dependent on foreign countries for our energy needs, and we did something about it. We set out to achieve energy independence, and we achieved that. We did just that to the point, as I indicated just a second ago, that we actually were able to achieve energy dominance. But today, that's not the case. Energy prices have skyrocketed. The most obvious on my constituents is the prices at the pump. The Energy Information Agency has raised its outlook for gas for 2022, saying that, uh, that uh, we are at risk of hitting $4 a gallon as a national average. AAA last week said that gas prices in Georgia have increased in nearly a dollar more than this time last year. Gentlemen, I have the honor and privilege of representing the entire coast of Georgia, including the two metro areas of Savannah and Brunswick. And they, in my district, have the, the average, the highest average gas prices in the state, higher than even in the Atlanta metro area. Savannah metro areas are, which are in my district, these two areas are home to two of the country's busiest ports, seaports, where we've seen firsthand how the energy crisis has exasperated the supply chain crisis. American families and businesses are being crushed by expensive utility bills. Electricity is up over 6% in the last year, and natural gas is up over 25%. Also, energy costs are the top driver of the record inflation we see today. So families are feeling it everywhere. Deputy Secretary Turk, I want to ask you, considering the Department of Energy's mission, as I, as I quoted before, what are you doing to ensure that American energy security and affordable energy for all Americans? So thank you for the question, and I have to say I feel incredibly proud to be part of this Department of Energy and this administration. And I think we're pushing uh, all the authorities that we have, all the funding streams that we have, including $62 billion in new funding authorities that the Congress has given us through the bipartisan infrastructure legislation, to build the diverse, secure, affordable, resilient energy supplies that we need in the future. Not just today, but five years, 10 years from now, to benefit all our US citizens, all our US people around, uh, around our country. And prices are too high right now. Uh, COVID has thrown the supply and demand for oil and gas out of whack, and we're suffering from that. We've got a near-term problem. It's not caused by pipelines. It's not caused by other things. It's caused by COVID, and we're trying to deal with that. Our strategic petroleum reserve was to try to shave that top part of that curve as our domestic supplies other supplies around the world for oil catch up with where demand is because we're now increasing our uh, economy uh, coming out of COVID, which is a great thing, but energy supplies have not matched up with that. Uh, in 2022, we will have the supplies meet the demand. We're just in a real tough spot right now, but absolutely well, we're focused on affordable. Let, let me ask you this, are. Mr. Turg, and, and, and with all due respect, you mentioned the strategic petroleum reserves. Do you think it's um, do you think it's important for the United States to maintain its energy independence? So absolutely, and I think it should be important for Europe, for Japan, for other countries around the yeah, world. Yeah, but we're not talking about Europe and Japan. We're talking about the United States of America. I remember former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo saying what a great asset it was to be able to travel to other foreign countries and know that we had energy dominance and energy independence. Yet we don't have it now. We've actually had to ask 
the Middle East to pump more oil in order to do it. You mentioned the strategic pro petroleum reserves, and I know that um, the administration made available 50 million barrels of oil to lower prices for Americans. How much of an effect did that release from the SPR have on oil prices? So, so just to be clear, energy security is also offshore wind and solar and wind and storage Understood. and hydrogen. Understood. That was not my question. Nuclear. Um, on the SPR piece of it, what we designed was a carefully set, a sale and an exchange tied together for the particular moment in time we are with the supply uh, and demand, dis demand disruption. On the exchange part, what we designed that to do is shave off that top part of the curve, provide some affordability, provide some additional affordability protection for American consumers who are paying too much at the pump, completely agree with you on that. And the exchange means that oil and gas companies actually return more product into the SPRO on the back end of this. So it's good for the SPRO, good for consumers. Obviously, it's a huge oil economy and a huge oil market out there, and there's a lot of forces outside of our immediate control. Um, but we're doing everything we can to promote affordability. Is that what the SPR was intended for, was to bring down prices like this? So it's dealing with a supply challenge, a near-term supply challenge caused by COVID, and the SPR is one tool in the tool belt that I have to say we spent two more many months designing this particular exchange mechanism and feel like it's really uh, really fit for this moment. Thank you. My time has expired. Now you'll back. By the way, 